Heavenly Father, we want to just thank you for this time you've given us to be together as your people. Thank you for this week, Lord. Thank you for helping us. Those of us that are mourning the loss of a loved one, we ask that you will comfort us as you always have, that you will heal us from our diseases, strengthen us from our weaknesses, and fill us uh, with hope, faith, and confidence when we have doubt and insecurity. We ask that you will continue with us throughout the Sabbath day, that you will abide with us, Lord, that you will be our strength and redeemer in all things, that you cover us with grace and pardon our iniquities as you fill us with your wisdom, discernment, and understanding. Bless everyone that is trying, doing their best to serve you, Lord, on this day of rest and abide with each and every one of us as we trust in you. Uh, for the Holy Spirit to speak through us. We commit ourselves in prayer, a special blessing for everyone that is here and those that cannot be with us this morning as well. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well this morning. Um, and thank you to Pastor Joe and, and Stan. Thank you for that wonderful message today, Stan, that I always really enjoy the Bible studies that you give. Always learn something each and every day. Um, okay, the title of my presentation today is The Power of Bold Prayer. Pray like you mean it. And believe me, I've been thinking about this a lot for the past uh, about a month or so, especially. Um, been going through a lot of issues, both physical, with physical pain and sickness and illness, but also spiritual like actual spiritual warfare. That's another topic for another day. Um, but today I wanna to concentrate on this, the power of bold, passionate prayer. And I hope that I can convey my message clearly and loudly with God's uh, help um, to you today. Have you ever felt defeated? beaten down before your battle even started ever felt like you've lost the fight have you ever felt surrounded by the enemy have you ever felt that your prayers are not answered ever wonder if your prayer or prayers even help i know i have i know i have and like i said especially recently the past month or so really four four to six weeks both spiritual warfare and physical pain, real like physical pain that I've never experienced ever before. Um, health reasons there. Let me share something with you. It's, it's a story. I don't know if you know about this person, but he is well known. His name is David Livingston. Now, David was a Scottish physician and explorer and, pioneer, and Christian pioneer missionary to Africa. He was the first Christian pioneer there. He led expeditions to Africa. And later on, he wrote, um, uh, well, throughout his adventures, throughout his travel in Africa, he wrote, he always left journals. He always wrote journals detailing what happened throughout the day or you know through the time that he was there who he encountered what what happened there is a particular journal entry that stated january 14th 1856. now let me just share this with you it's very interesting i think you'll find that to be the case as well um and let me tell you that as scholars have really just dissected and studied his entry journals, the way he was writing, everything. They noticed that on this particular date, January 14th, 1856, his writing was a little slanted. It was a little out of a little out of the ordinary, a little frazzled. Uh, you know, they they conceded. They said that it was as if he was under stress. 
under duress, under uh, something that was wrong, that was not normal in his handwriting. Anyway, that night, Livingston was aware that there was a tribe and this tribe was extremely upset that he and his team were on their land. In fact, he was warned that they were planning on attacking him that night. Needless to say, he and his team were very, very afraid. But they couldn't just, you know, pick up and go. Travel at those on those days was very different, obviously, as we all know. Plus, he was on a mission and he needed to push forward. He wrote that night, January 14th, 1856. He details the tribe and the rumored attack. Well, that night came and went and there was no attack. A few years later, it is noted that the leader of the tribe gave his life to Jesus. So he had the leader of the tribe converted to Christianity. Livingston took that opportunity and asked the leader about that particular night. He asked him why he and his warriors had not come to attack uh, the group, why they hadn't shown up, what happened. The tribal leader stated, well, we did come that night to attack you. We were going to kill you and your people. But he stated when we arrived, there were 47 armed soldiers outside of your camp. They were huge, they were big, they were heavily armed. So we decided not to attack you. And we saw them again and again after that night, but specifically that night. So we decided not to attack you for fear that you would kill us. Livingston was confused because he knew they did not have any soldiers. Livingston didn't come with, with armed soldiers. He didn't come with anybody. He was a missionary, a simple missionary with his team. Maybe a doctor or two, but normal people. No soldiers, no warriors worth with, were with Livingston and his team at all. So David returned, David Livingston returned to Scotland a little later, and he started to share the story with people. And these people were from his congregation. And one person came up to him and tells him, please let me know the date of that incident, when it happened. David tells him the date. January 14th, 1856. The man proceeded to tell Livingston that on that date, that particular night, this man, he and 46 other congregation members went to church and all prayed for David and his team. They too were aware of the possible attack and they were praying all night for the team's safety and protection. So do the math, right? 46 plus one, 47 people in total in the congregation prayed that night for David and his team. And truly, we can say truly interceded for them, right? Isn't it, I mean, when I heard about the story and I looked it up, I couldn't believe it. But like I said, people have actually studied David Livingston's handwriting. And on that particular night, they said it was so frazzled, so odd that they knew that something had happened. And so let's take a look at that. Picture it, 47 people in Scotland praying for David and his team in Africa. The enemies did not go to attack, but are stopped in their tracks at the sight of warriors, armed warriors. But David knew, and we know, that those intercessors were God's mighty warriors, prayer warriors. God's army 
part of God's army on this earth. And I, you know what? I can tell you something. I'm going to say this. I'm going to share it with you again. First of all, prayer works. But most, but it must be true. Okay, this is, this is what you have to remember. It must be true prayer. Okay, let's look at James 5, 16 through 18. And I don't have it up on screen, so I apologize about that. Okay, but let's just go through it. I'll read it. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Be effective. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. That's another story. That's another example of amazing, passionate, bold prayer. Again, pray with boldness. You have to be on fire. Pray. The prayer must be true. Fearless and bold. Not lukewarm, not weak, not doubtful. Be bold and on fire with your prayers. Know that God sees into your heart every time you communicate with him through prayer and supplications. You have to pray in the spirit. Fire up and know that Abba, our heavenly father, will respond. Prayer moves mountains, but you must follow Jesus' directions. He tells you exactly how to pray. He does. He's told us before. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. You're acknowledging that God is God. Give glory to God. Pray with respect to God. And pray with humility. That is what we need to do. And I can tell you that once, remember when this whole pandemic began? And we as a little church, a few people, we started praying for each other, for our church and for our families, for our friends and for our world, for our community. We got up, we raised each other up in prayer and the whole world in prayer. And we prayed for God's protection, anointing and blessings. Remember, we got up at 7 a.m. We started praying at 7 a.m. each and every morning. And I love that because I could actually feel you. I could feel you guys praying with me. And I felt so much better I could move forward. Even though we were locked down, even though we were separated, we were far away from each other. But for those minutes that we were with each other, we were together. We were in unity, coming together, coming forth, praying to our God, the one true living God. We were all together as he wants us to be. Even though we didn't have a building, even though we were in lockdown. You have to understand this. We are the church people. We don't need a building. I'm sorry, but we don't. We need each other and we need God and we need to pray boldly and loudly with love, passion, fearless prayer. And then look at this, Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. It will because it does work. I am a poster child for that and I will share with you in a minute why and how but remember pray with boldness and fire acknowledge God is God give glory to God 
Pray with respect to God and pray with humility. I went through a similar situation like David did. I faced the enemy years ago before I became a true follower of Jesus Christ, a true believer of the one true living God. But back then when I just started my journey, I was not a prayer warrior. See, because I didn't have this, first of all, relationship with the one true living God, our Heavenly Father. And I lacked faith. I needed to believe. I was just asking, but I needed to believe. Because prayer warriors, they don't just ask, they believe. They remember God's promises. And remember, he is a righteous God. He is a just God. He is the creator of everything. Everything seen and unseen. He created it. I recall feeling totally alone and abandoned in a land that was not my own, a foreign land. I recall vividly the reality of my situation, the depth of despair and complete mental and spiritual torture. I needed to repent for my salvation to literally manifest. And I can tell you that it was a process. But I can tell you that once I did and I got down on my knees and prayed and repented, things started to happen that night, that night. But I also want to talk today about other people around the world, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ around the world, especially those facing enemies daily, being tortured and persecuted every single day. Case in point, our fellow brothers and sisters, US citizens and Christian believers, Christian brothers and sisters in Afghanistan and all around the world, being left behind, sitting behind enemy lines, literally sitting behind enemy lines. Ladies and gentlemen, pray. Let's be prayer warriors. Let's pray daily. Let's pray individually. Let's pray as a family. Let's pray as a church, but let's pray. Let's believe and let's pray. We can pray and ask our God, the one again, the one true living God to protect them, to protect us and save them and us. Remember, our God is not a small God with a small G. He is the one true living God. Be bold and pray big. Pray without ceasing, without a single doubt. Let's look at 1 John 3, 22. And receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do whatever pleases him. Prayer warriors know God will look into their hearts and will see and know what they are praying. That's true. When you pray, that's why I said earlier, when you pray, don't have a doubt in him, of him. Don't be thinking well, you know, I'm going to pray, but if this doesn't work, I have a plan B. Or, you know what, I'm going to pray five minutes and then I'm going to see what other drugs I can take. Um, you know what, I'm going to immediately just, just go maybe call a psychic. 
No, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. First of all, if you're a true believer by this point. Prayer warriors know God will look into their hearts and will see and know why they are praying. Remember, be bold and pray big. Jesus is the key. Jesus tore the veil. And now we, the remnant, God's true creation, we can communicate with God through Jesus Christ. Remember, pray without ceasing. And pray your true heart's desire. He knows why you're praying for people. Is it just lip service? Is it just because you want to say, oh, yeah, I pray every day. Oh, yeah, I pray every day. Yeah. And in the back of your mind, you're saying, yeah, I pray every day for like 60 seconds, but I pray. Don't give lip service. Pray for each other. And what I was saying earlier, don't idol worship. When you pray, don't doubt. Don't ever have any doubt and think that maybe your prayer won't work. Don't think about that medical report or the word of mouth on the street or on the TV. Oh, you got to be afraid, people. Oh, you got to be afraid. Oh, there's something new going on. Oh, yeah, go hide under your desks. Yeah, don't go out. Don't get any groceries. Yeah, don't help anybody. Oh, no. You know what? Because go put this, this thing on, on your mouth or on your eyes or on your head or on your entire body. Yeah, go, go get a diaper and put it all over your body and, and you'll be okay. No, it doesn't work that way. And I know we all have things that we go through, sicknesses, illnesses, death and the family, everything. Like the, the song that was just played. I ran into that song actually a couple of days ago. And I listened to it and I read the lyrics and I thought, you know what, this is exactly what our church needs to hear. This is exactly what I needed to hear. As my body is crumbling in my mind, as my body is trying to fend off infections and sicknesses and illnesses and bacteria and viruses and everything hurts, but I'm not the only one. There are people younger than me facing worse issues. There are people older than me facing worse issues. So no, it doesn't work with lukewarm prayer. It doesn't work with lip service. It doesn't work. Let me tell you this. It doesn't work only for Pastor Joe. I called Pastor Joe and Martha the 18. I still do out of respect, really. I love them. In fact, I, I, I have to say, when I was going through my personal situation in that foreign country years and years ago, it seems like a lifetime ago. But Jackie, I don't know if you guys know who Jackie is, but her name is Jackie, part of the original Heart of Worship Church. She brought me into the church and into the faith. Jesus Christ sent her to bring me in and introduced me to Pastor Joe and Martha. And my gosh, the 18, that's, that name, that title doesn't do justice for them because I know they were part of the people that were praying for me. That's what I needed to say. I know that Pastor Joe and Martha and Jackie and a couple of other peoples from Two Heart of Worship, or I'm sorry, Heart of Worship, the original heart of worship, prayed for me and my son those years back ago, back so many years. And I know because I could actually feel, I was like David Livingston, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I was like him. In the middle of the storm, in the middle of the darkness of fighting and war all around us, I could feel that my son and I were in the middle of this amazing circle we were in the middle and i could feel angels all around us 
every move I made after that one night, after the night I repented and prayed, like I never had before, I know that Pastor Joe, Martha, and Jackie were part of those prayer warriors praying for my son and for me. And I could feel the love. I could feel the prayers. I could feel the hope, the faith that it overtook me. It overtook my situation. And it completely changed my history, my life my destiny because intercessors prayer warriors took the time and believed and hoped and prayed and supplicated people let's do that i want to do that i want to be that way and we can we can help each other even if we're not together even if we can't see each other. Don't idol worship. Don't think only an attorney can help. Only a judge can help. Only a politician can help. No. <laughs> Many times they do worse. Many times they're not the right thing to do. They're not the right, the right thing to say. They're not the thing that we need. We need a miracle. We need prayer warriors who have a true relationship with God, who can communicate with the one true living God and can overwhelm circumstances with light and hope and faith and overtake it with love and caring. Let's be that. Let's do that. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or what age you are or what color or what. Just do it. Speak and proclaim the most dangerous name. Governments, nation, politics, kings and rulers all cringe and cower in fear at the mention of his name. Satan, demons, and their minions all cover and flee at the mention of his name. The most dangerous name in history, people. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. They all cower in fear. Why? Because they know who he is. They know what he is. They know why he is. Jesus fulfilled the law, tore the veil, and freed the slaves. He overcame and conquered the world, defeated death, evil, and Satan. He defeated and conquered all of that, all of that. Under his feet, they're done. Jesus Christ, the name of all, all names, the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Follow Jesus' directions when praying. That's what I have to tell you. Nothing more, nothing less. He gave us directions. He gave us instructions on how to pray and why to pray. I think at this point, we should know. I think at this point, it should be made clear to us what we need to do, what we have to do, what we should do. No more relying on just pastors. No more relying on just certain people in the church because they have the magic touch. No, it's not them. They don't have anything that you can't have. But that comes with faith in him. That comes with love in him. That comes with you having communication with him, an honest communication with him and honest prayer to him. That's how it's achieved. Nothing more, nothing less. And yes, one last thing, sometimes the answer to your prayer will be no. Sometimes the answer to your prayer will be they have to die. They have to go away. They have to sleep. And let's face it, it's sleep. If you're a true believer by this time, if you're a mature Christian at this time, you should know that it's sleeping. We all have to sleep for a while. 
some sooner than later. But we know that we will all see each other again. And let's pray that all here in this church have a long, long life ahead of us still, because I want all of us to still have time on this earth. Why? So that you can win the lottery and spread the love that way? No. <laughs> I want you to stay with me, to stay with our church, to become prayer warriors, to grow our church, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, the most dangerous name in history. I want you to have that passionate relationship, true relationship with the one true living God, with our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, to be his hands and feet on this earth. Because I want all of us to live longer, to make a difference in this world, to spread the gospel and be the people he created us to be. Not fearing, not doubting. Remember that the enemy will always throw stones and boulders your way. Especially when you start building that true relationship with God. It will always try to make you sway and doubt the word of God. But let's look at 1 Corinthians 1.25. No matter what the world might say, I'm sorry, let's look at 1 Corinthians 1.25. For the foolishness of God is wiser than the human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Amen. That is beautiful. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Oh, yeah. Follow the science. I don't think so. Remember, 1 Corinthians 1.25. That is the truth. That is the truth. This world is going to tell you that God and Jesus and the Ten Commandments and the Bible is fake, is a story. Make believe. Don't fall for it. As far as my, I know, The Bible is the truth. I believe, I know from my life, what I've gone through, what I've seen, the Bible is the truth. Everything else can be made up. No matter what the world might say and scheme and manipulate, remember God works many times in mysterious ways. Ways that men believe to be or seem weak or foolish, but in fact turn out to be revolutionary. Brothers and sisters, let's pray. We have many more years on this earth, but that time we should spend working for our God, the true, the one true living God. Heavenly Father, Adonai, thank you for another beautiful day, another amazing and beautiful Sabbath. Thank you for the breath of life that you have given each and every one of us. We come to you and pray for blessings upon this church, each and every member of this church and the families in this church, that you give us strength, courage, wisdom, and intelligence to be the people that you created us to be, made in your image, your likeness, Father God. Please be with us all throughout the rest of our days and journey. Bless us and protect us and keep us safe. And may we go forth living and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ boldly and loudly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.